Welcome back to The Wood Grafter. Today we're going to review the Mark II rail square from benchdogs.co.uk. If that sounds good, stick around. So it's February 2021 and coming to the market in March 2021 is this beast. This is the Mark II rail square from benchdogs.co.uk. Now I reviewed the Mark I rail some time ago and it's really great to see the changes and the innovation brought to that product. So today we're going to compare it to the Mark I. We're going to look at the key features we get on this device and then we'll put it through its paces. It's just a very, very simple cut. Now if you don't know what a rail square is, you use it in conjunction with, well, a rail. You connect this to this and it creates you a square that gives you repeatable square accurate cuts. Fantastic for breaking down large boards, for cross cutting, for rip cutting. I use my Mark I in the workshop all the time. So I was really excited when yesterday my postman knocked on my door and said, there you go, something new to have a look at. So first of all, let's have a look at this and see why it's different than the Mark I version. So this is the Mark II version and here, I have the Mark I version. So you can see in design, it's pretty similar. The finish on this is probably the first thing you're gonna note. It's still made out of aluminium, and in fact, to be precise, it's made out of aluminium 6082T, whatever that is. And it's a weighty little beast, similar sort of weight to the Mark I, very, very similar weight to the Mark I. But the first thing you'll notice is the finish is very, very different. Now this is a glass beaded finish. Now I have actually been down to Ralph's factory at benchdogs.co.uk to meet Ralph, to have a look around, get to know the business a little bit more. Before lockdown, I may add, actually before the first lockdown, so well over a year ago now. And what I love about benchdogs.co.uk is they're always investing back in the business. They invest in innovation, but they also continue to invest in production as well. And there's always a new machine arriving or about to arrive in the um, in the factory now one of those machines he got some time ago was this shot blasting machine that gives it this really good finish glass beads blasted against the aluminium gives it this really nice finish and i love it it's very very tactile you can feel a slight roughness to the finish and it's really nice and it looks beautiful in uh, in the flesh so to speak so that's the first thing you're going to notice the second thing you're going to notice are these little thumb wheels here. There's no thumb wheels on this one. And the Mark I was locked into the rail by using this brass fitment here and two Allen bolts and an Allen key that was supplied with the kit. And that locked it in to this T track here on the overall track itself. This one is toolless, so we don't need the Allen key anymore. And rather than having this separate brass bar, this is actually now milled into the machining. And that's possible because once again, they've invested in the milling side of the business and they can now produce things like this. So this is really, really firm. So to fit this one to the track, you simply slide it in to that T-track there. Goes on nice and easy, locks into position and that's it, toolless fitting. Now there was somebody who fed back to me when I did the Mark I review that I can't be bothered with typing those two screws up, they're going to get lost, the Allen key is going to vanish, I won't be able to find it in time. This solves that problem. Not that it ever was a problem to me, but then again, I work in a very organised workshop. If you're out in the field, I could well see that situation happening. So these two little catches here are a really good addition. Now, apart from that, the thing is pretty similar. You'll notice there's a number of holes here, and if you turn the Mark I over, you'll see that you still get those holes, one, two, three, and four threaded holes, one, two, three, and four threaded holes. I'm there to tape a range of accessories that come with the kit, if, depending on what you buy, and we'll look at those in a second. But the Mark II has also got this set of four holes here, a smaller thread, looks like an M6 thread here, that looks like an M8 thread. And that's for accessories that bench dogs are going to introduce. And we'll talk about those in a second. Now, if you're a really shallow human being like me, you'll also see that the engravings change. And look at this, this one's got a wood grafter logo on it. 
and it's also got the name the wood grafter now that's an option that bench dogs are now providing on this kit you can get it engraved with your company logo i love that sort of thing not everybody will but then again you don't need to have it so that's it it's the same high quality material there's a new finish on it we've got the thumb rails this is now milled into the device itself and we've got the graving option and there's some accessories that fit into this rail that don't fit in to this rail. So that's a big whistle stop tour of the difference between the Mark I and the Mark II. Now the other difference is this is actually calibrated at the factory. What do I mean by calibration? Well Ralph's milling setup gives a very very high tolerance in manufacturing but now he's got another machine that he uses to measure the final device and you get a report about the device. So this report comes in this nice Bench Dogs branded wallet calibration report and inside there you get two pieces of paper. The first piece of paper is a diagram, a picture of this and then the second one are some measurements. The important measurements are actually on the diagram as well. Now I'm going to stress that this report is about the rail square that you get. It's not a generic report about all the rail squares. Every time Ralph makes a rail square he measures it, he tests it, he creates a report. The report is the square that you actually have. And that's pretty unique and it's pretty special. Now I asked Ralph, why did you do that? Why did you feel the need for a calibration report? And what happened is on the old Mark I square, although I never had a problem with this, and if you saw the video, you'll see it was a high degree of accuracy I was getting out of this and continue to get out of this. It's never it's never failed me ever and everything's always bang on 90 degree cuts which is what we want from it of course but some people wrote back and said hey Ralph I'm not getting the accuracy I expect to get out of this and when this was returned back to Ralph because if you if you contact him he'll take customer services incredibly seriously he measured it and found that they were all okay so he now wants to let you know that out of the factory this thing is calibrated now let me orientate you to the diagram because when you first see it it's not super clear what you're looking at. This line here, this blue line here, is this edge here. These two blue lines here are the either side of this little part here that goes onto the track. This edge is this edge of the square. This edge and this edge are these edges of the square and this edge is this edge of the square so that's what you're that's basically what you're looking at and Ralph takes some key measurements he measures how square this end is here and he measures how square this edge is here he then measures how square this edge is relative to this piece so that angle between there this edge and that angle he then measures the distance between these two holes and these two holes and then he measures the distance from the center point of here to this edge. Now why is all that important? Well this edge measurement from here to here has got to be 90 degrees because when you put your track onto the rail square and slide it on, as I turn these thumb screws watch what happens to the rail. I'm going to deliberately put it out of kilter and when I turn this thumb screw watch the rail. Can you see that? It moved over and when I tighten this one up that will also move over. So what's happening is these thumb screws are pushing that edge of that track against there. And if that angle and that angle is not square, this would not clamp down square. And that's repeatable. Every single time it's that angle to that edge that's making that thing square. And if you look at mine here, it's come out with a tolerance of 90.003 degrees. And if you look at this end here, 90.001 degrees. So the rail square that I've got is, is pretty bang on 90 degrees. As a woodworker, I'm not really concerned about the 0.001 degrees. Now this distance between the center of this hole to this edge is important because that is the distance from here to here. And that needs to be pretty accurate as well. If there's any variation in that, this is going to be loose when you clamp it down. Now the distance between these centers is important because because you use those holes to attach some bench dogs that you can then use in conjunction with an MFT top. So they need to be pretty accurate because they line up with a standard MFT grid, standard 96 millimeter center MFT grid of 20 millimeter holes. So I know on here, the distance between that one and that one on my square is 191.983. 
That spans two sets of holes, 96 millimeter centers, 96 times two is 192. So this is 191.98 high degree of tolerance again to fit into an MFT table. And similarly the one at the bottom, 191.982. So about the same sort of measurement. That should fit in theory into my 20 millimeter holes and it does. So that tolerance is pretty bang on and it's pretty important that that's right. And once that's into my bench, it sits there quite well, you've suddenly got a guaranteed 90 degree cutting station without the use of any fences and without relying on the 20 millimeter grid of holes to be square. Now think about this, there's many ways that you can create these days an MFT. I made mine with a trend jig, see this video if you've not seen that. You, the Peter Parfit path guide system is a very popular one at the moment. You can still buy them from Festool or you can buy many CNC versions. Now depending on where you buy it from or the care you take when you make it, you've no guarantee that that grid of holes is going to be bang on 90 degrees. This doesn't rely on the grid of holes, the holes are purely used to position it onto your bench. And it's this device and this device that gives you that guaranteed squareness. So that could be important because all you actually need to use this in an MFT is two 20 millimeter holes, 192 millimeters apart. Simples. So there you go, your rail square comes with a whole series of calibrated measurements. And here's the report as well. So it gives you the different areas. So we start here. So this is measurement number one measurement number two, three and four, so it goes around the square in that direction, etc. And it gives you the nominal measurements, so this corner here needs to be 90 degrees, and it's got an upper and a lower error. And it looks like it's allowing for a plus or minus 0.2 degree tolerance on, on the creation of this. And as I say, the error on mine is 0 0.001, and therefore it's passed. And I asked Ralph about that, I said, what happens if you do a tolerance check on one of these and it fails? I don't ship it. I make a new one and I ship it out to the order. And this is locked to this device and the order number here is wood grafter for obvious reasons. Um, and that's that calibration for that device. Now the machine that he's using to measure that tolerance is the Abilink CMM. Not a machine I'm familiar with, but then again, why would I be? But I did go away and have a quick look at that on the website and you can sort of see the machine here on this picture and I'll leave a link in the notes if you want to go and have a look at that machine for yourself for whatever reason just interesting I guess but that machine is measuring a tolerance of two microns two microns that's the calibration accuracy on the machine he uses to measure now it seems a bit churlish but I said to Ralph I'm going to check it and I'm going to put your square to the test of my £14.99 digital angle finder because how can that ever be inaccurate <laughs> but let's do it just for a bit of fun so i'm going to slide the rail on and i really love how simple that is this used to twist a little bit when i'm sliding it on and off but this is super super smooth i'm going to push the fun caps down and that's it my job is done the angle i'm actually interested in in use is this edge here and actually the cutting edge i don't really care if this is square or not as long as this and this is square, then I'm pretty happy. So, I'm going to zero this down. I'll turn it on first of all, probably a good idea. Okay, and I'm going to zero this down. And there you go. Can you see? 90 degrees, bang on. 90 degrees, bang on. And if I can try and measure this end as well. I'm just going to re-zero it to that edge. And I'll try and again get myself out of the way. And this edge is... 90 degrees, bang on. Now there's no way I'm going to get the same level of accuracy out of this cheap device, uh, out of the hundreds of thousands of pound device that Ralph is using to, to register the calibration. But it's just nice to know, isn't it, that it seems to be okay. So, how do you use this beast? Well, super simple, super simple. Just putting a bit of waste board down here because I don't want to cut into my bench. And I come along with the panel I want to cut. I butt it against the, the uh, square.
like so, and I make a cut. And that is going to make for you accurate 90 degree cuts all day long, and it doesn't really get much simpler than that. Now you can get some accessories with this one. We've already seen the first of those accessories, which are the adapters to allow it to fit into a um, MFT style top. And if you take that option, you also get that a couple of B collars. Now the idea of a B collar, it allows you to set the height to allow for different thicknesses of stock. I could be working on this piece of oak so I can set it there. So I can adjust the height of this or both of these to allow for my stock I'm working on. So I can drop this into my MFT and I can bring my stock up against those dogs and the track itself is now held at the right height for the thickness of the stock. Now again, depending on what you order, you may also get some of these 30 millimeter dogs. The B cards are 30 millimeters, so they can simply slot into there and they give you a longer reference surface, which again is quite useful, I think. Now again, depending on the kit you buy, you can also get some of these bevel adapters, 30 millimeters and 60 millimeters. And they again, just flick into the same holes that we looked at before. Now if you do things like kitchen fitting, or I guess bathroom fitting, and often you've got the, the worktop, at the end of the worktop, you often have quite a deep bull nose. And if you do that, if you have a deep bull nose, you can't actually reference this against the flat edge because it rests onto the curve. And that's where these come in. So they can simply come along and they give you a deeper reference point that still allows you to make those square cuts. I say these are optional and they come as a 30 millimeter and a 60 millimeter depth. And that's dependent on the size of the bull nose that you have on your worktop surface. Super quick, super easy to use. Now there's two more features I want to show you on this. The first one is this sliding angle here. This just gives you an additional support on your stock. Now think about how this works. The edge of your board references against this edge here, that configuration. And even though this is on a bench, you can see that tips down under the weight. Not so much of a problem on a bench, but if you're working unsupported, that can be an issue for you. And that's where this little silver slide comes in. Loosen the knurls, slide it forward, tighten that down, and that supports the weight of the device. And now that's resting firmly on the board, everything supported, and you can go through and make your cut. So that's really, really quite useful. Now, the final thing are these cutouts here on the plate, and that's to allow for clamping, allowing you to still reference your stock against the edge, but now I can clamp that into position for additional accuracy and obviously I've shown that upside down so you can see how that would work and that's what those two cutouts are for there so that's pretty much it that is the mark ii rail square it's got some new innovations I love these toolless lever locks to actually lock it into place I love the fact it comes completely calibrated so I know how accurate the device is going to be I love the new finish and obviously I love the fact that I can get my logo engraved on the device itself a little bit of a status thing for me in the workshop, but if you were out in the field, having your company logo on there gives you a bit of protection because you know if somebody's borrowed it, obviously they're going to return it, but you'll know they borrowed it. All in all, a really good device. Now these four new holes here are for some accessories that will be coming to the market in the near future. And the first accessory is going to be a repeatable cut stop. Now, a few weeks ago, I did a review on this system here. This is the benchdogs.co.uk parallel guide system. And you can see how that's going to work. There'll be a different type of bracket, not this one, that will allow that type of extrusion to sit on the plate. And although that's not yet made and released on the marketplace, you can see how that would work. This would calibrate up against the edge as normal. My stop would come in, and at that point, I can now make repeatable cuts using this. So that would give me square, accurate, repeatable cuts, um, which would be pretty awesome. So quite exciting to see the accessories come into the marketplace for this as well. And when they're available, we'll get, it, we'll get hold of a set and we'll put them through the paces and see what we think. But straight away, you could see that working incredibly well as an option. And talking about option, what are the options and how much should this thing cost? Now there's two options you can buy. There's this one, which will be the Festool, Makita, Triton and Evolution rails. 
And then there's one with a slightly different profile design here that will do the Maffel and the Bosch. Both of those are going to be available to you by the end of March. I think he's taking pre-orders now over on the website, so go along and have a look at that. Now, no matter which one you get, whether you get the Festival or the Maffel version of this, they come in a kit. Kit number one is going to give you the rail square, and it's going to give you a canvas bag to keep your rail square in. All nicely branded, benchdogs.co.uk, just in case you didn't know. That's going to cost you £110. You can also buy the kit with a sustainer and an insert that allows you to store your rail square quite happily away safely and it's got a number of cutouts to take different devices so it will come with a sustainer, the device itself and the insert and that would cost you £150. You can also get what's known as a fully loaded kit and in the fully loaded kit you're going to get the sustainer, the rail square, the insert you're going to get your two MFT dogs, you're going to get your two B collars, oops, and you're going to get the little Allen key for the B collars. You're also going to get the two 30 millimeter dogs, same diameter as the B collars to give you that extended reference edge. And you'll get the 30 millimeter bevel extenders and the 60 millimeter bevel extenders now this insert was obviously designed for the mark one so you're not going to get that allen key but you don't need it because this is now toolless and that configuration is going to cost you 199 pound now if you've already got a sustainer and an insert maybe you're upgrading from the mark one and you decide to buy the square and some accessories you can actually buy the fully loaded kit without the sustainer and without the inserts and that'll cost you 166 pound for the square the bevel adapters, the MFT adapters, the B collars, the Allen key and the 30mm dogs. And no matter which kit you buy, you're going to get the calibration report for your specific device. And if you do want to have your logo engraved on this, obviously not my logo, your logo, you just simply send a copy of your logo over to Ralph, I think it's at hello dot hello at benchdogs.co.uk is the email address but it's clearly called out on the website if I've got that wrong sending the file format out and for £10 on top of those prices we've spoken about he will engrave this here which will make a beautiful present for the woodworker in your life I think so there you go the Mark II Rail Square from benchdogs.co.uk if you are buying it use the code the woodcrafter at checkout and you'll get 5% off the overall price of any of your purchases from benchdogs.co.uk I hope you found that useful look out for more reviews in the future thank you for watching The Woodcrafter stay safe and I'll see you soon take care